Welcome to Black Love Matters, where this serves a therapy session for figuring out adulthood. Loving each other. Or finding Anna Brock and Michelle. Or Jay-Z and Beyonce. Who is you? I'm Neil. And I'm Naomi. And this is episode 403, y'all. Be sure to leave a one, two, three, four, five star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and on Stitcher and follow us on all four into social media at Black Love Matters. It's black. With okay. What's going on, baby? Hey y'all, happy Monday. Listen, I told y'all what I was gonna tell you about. Um, I had a good retire experience. It was really nice, surprisingly. You know, remember we say we were speaking light into it? It was nice. Um, it was it was they was on time, they was friendly, they was gentle. For the folks with sister lots, you know, it's always a sign when you go in and you gotta rub your head a little harder or you know me, braids, twists, locks, ponytails, no matter what it is, weave, don't pull my edges too tight, right? Oh. So it, it was nice. It was just an overall nice experience. As soon as I walked in, they was waiting up on me. Um, look at your edges. Look at my edges. Oh, look at the little edges. Thank you, thank you. you got a little I, baby hair there. You know what I said? Leave some hair out. All of it don't got to be in there. Like, you know, we can gradually go to that. That's fr- that's fine hair. That's a little new girl. What? Not like the baby. <laughs> Not like the fur. The fur. It ain't hair. It's the fur on the baby. It's the fur on the baby. That make them um, hairy. Mm-hmm. You silly. A little new girl. Um, but going there made me just... It, it, the main person who twisted my hair was like this. Um, she's more established. She knows what she's doing, blah, blah, blah. But she had some trainees coming up under her. And the trainee had an appointment, but someone canceled. And so the trainee kind of helped her retwist my hair. She asked, was I comfortable with it? I was like, yeah, sure, no problem. But the trainee's like a young girl. And she was just ideally young black girl from New York. Like, if you had the stereotype of, like, what it means to be young and be in New York, she was it. What I mean by that, she was talking and saying what she was doing and like her hopes and dreams. She was nervous. You know, Naomi, no, no, no. These are my girl. What you nervous about? What you going to do? Mm-hmm. You're, you're young, black, talented, smart, beautiful, funny. What, what, what you worry about? Right. Young, black, and gift. <laughs> you know, you got to speak life into the children. And she mm-hmm. was, I wasn't lying. I wasn't gassing her. She was like, well, I'm a singer. And I was just like, Oh, oh. <laughs> she gave me her stuff on Spotify. So, um, I have to go check it out. Um, but then on the, then she quickly flipped from her, you know, I'm not, um, talking bad about, if you want to be a singer, you can throw down. I ain't heard her. She probably can throw down, right? Mm-hmm. Like do what you gotta do. There's plenty of singers who can't hold a note who was fabulous. So if you got the it factor thrive, but what made me reminisce on the youngness of it, right? When she's talking about her passion of, for singing and real music and R and B and all that type of stuff, she flip it and be like, and I'm mad because my weave, I don't know if I should send it back or keep it. And I'm like, what? What's wrong with her weed? Me and the stylist was like, me and the um, sister like consultant was like, what are you talking about, sis? She got like this curly afro weave and her hair is a little bit darker and this one was more of a dusty brown. Mm-hmm. And she's like, should I dye it? Me and the girl like, sure, mm-hmm. but it might be too dark then. Like, mm-hmm. and is that real hair? Like, we don't know. And it's like cackling. Should, is that, well, allegedly it's human. I don't know what that is. Honey. But then, so, but she just got so riled up by it. And we was just, kind of, me and the consultant kind of looked at each other like, to be young. Remember the days in which the things you worried about was just your weave color matching? Yeah. And then, I like, me and the consultant okay. was just looking like, who gives a fuck? <laughs> Either way, put it on your head, slick it back with some gel and go about your day. Um, but it was it was funny. But I, then thinking about it, you know what it really got me? She reminded me of she should be extra on. You know, I, I tried to support Issa Rae. Mm-hmm. She got her new show out. It's called The Sweet Life. It's cute, y'all. But it ain't for Nyambi. Um... I'm a little too auntie for it. I'm a little, I think I just aged, not just, I've aged out of it a few years, mm. probably five, six. Um, you know what it reminds me of? Come on, um, millennials. It's Baldwin Hills for Generation Z. Mm. You know how they got the L word with like Generation Z? That's exactly what this is. This oh. is Baldwin Hills Generation Z. I'm old. It's not for me. It's basically a bunch of middle class black kids and a few working poor black kids trying to find themselves. Been there, done that. So, but it's cute for the children. So I encourage all like the um, generation X, all the children in 95 to go ahead and watch them. Like, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Example. For example, like, first of all, like one of the gentlemen, one of the working poor gentlemen um, pulled up. He got a Honda. Ain't no wrong with a little ratty, raggedy little Honda car- down to the club with a Honda cars be. Ain't no wrong with that. Mm-hmm. But what he got in the Honda is, you know, the older cars, you know, the little visors. Mm hmm. After a while, them motherfuckers don't stay up. The the shock, the suspension go away, whatever the fuck it is, it just goes the fuck away. So this nigga used a piece of tape to hold it up. Not even the good silver duct tape, the cheap black electrical tape. 
So he in the car trying to kick it with this girl and the shit keep falling and he just keep putting the tape back up. So one is something about that man worth it that I don't like. Why you don't like it? It's just something that tingles my coochie about like, it ain't the fact that it's an older car. Like do what you need to do. Live within your means. But you know that motherfucking visor keep flapping down. Get you some good duct tape or take that whole motherfucker off. Your choice. Next. Going back to the work ethic, then the, the children have like this nice little birthday party for one of their friends up in Palm Springs. I think it's Baldwin Springs. Oh, no, they're not from Baldwin Hills. They're from Ladero Hills. I don't know. It must be the new mid bougie black area in L.A. I don't know. Y'all help me out. Mm-hmm. Um, but people from L.A., y'all let me know. That's where they're from. But then they went to Palm Springs, rented a house for a friend. You know that nigga who be in a car with a Honda cars be with the broken visor? You know what he put up in? What? A fucking McLaren. Oh, Y'all, near I'm telling people what the McLaren is because I barely know the McLaren is. Oh. A McLaren and a Lamborghini are the same car to me. <laughs> it's a very uh, nice oh, car. Oh, oh, over, overpriced. Expensive. Expensive. Expensive car. Expen- go up like, um, what's those robots that are humans? Androids. No. Oh, are they? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Did we agree on that? Like That's UFOs? Oh. <laughs> this is I, I thought Android was like a system. <laughs> no. Oh, 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 I get what you mean by Android. You scared me for a minute. I said the aliens back here? <laughs> Um, you know what I'm talking about? No, it's a superhero. Bumblebee in them. Oh. It's the cars that look like Transformers. <laughs> what the robots look like? An- look like humans. humans. Androids? Right. What? Well, you who? <laughs> now I'm saying it's so commonly like yeah. it was a normal thing. Well, hell, Tesla now. <laughs> you see Elon go have a bunch of Elons in our house. Yes. Shout that nigga crazy. But so he put up in a McLaren. Sir, I know to rent a McLaren, it got to be at least a G a week because Let me look it up. to rent a minivan was like 400. So a McLaren got to be a G plus. And I only say a G because nobody was going. It's the COVID like they need somebody just to run these wheels, turn, turn the engine over so the battery don't die. So, sir, you can get one on Toro. Let's see. Sir, how are you going to rent a McLaren, but you won't buy industrial duct tape? To hold up your visor. Or better yet, why don't you go to the junkyard? Because we know how them Honda Ooh. cars be. And you go from there. Guess how much it is. Look. So, on Toro. Oh, Toro. Mm-hmm. It's nine eighty nine a day. A day. And he had at least for three, four days. Oh. Because you don't just go all the way to Palm Springs unless he really stunned. Maybe I- Issa, did you pay for that car for that boy? Issa, now you know you shouldn't have paid for that car for that boy. See, don't they look like the um, Lamborghini? Look like a yeah. Transformer. <laughs> I don't a know the car. difference. It's a sports car with the doors that goes out. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. I like a nice car. But I'm getting... See, that's how I'm getting my bag. I'd rather have, like, an old school, like, Corvette or, like, an old school Mustang. Like, I'd rather have a car made out of metal mm-hmm. than the plastic ones that, like, that they 3D print. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, that McLaren looks like it's 3D printed. Don't get me wrong. I know it's a beautiful car. Like, mm-hmm. I know it's beautifully made, but it looks like a 3D printed car. Where an old school, like, Mustang or something doesn't look 3D painted to me. Right. Like, I want some heavy. Just like, I guess we'll get into that later. Oh, last thing before I get into a heaviness is everybody fucking everybody and no one's committed. It's very much that hangout culture. And I'm just like, oh, this is what it looks like in action. Like, I know what it is in conversation through, like, cousins and some younger friends. Mm -hmm. But seeing it on the television, I'm like... Sis, he fucked your friend and he fucked you. Now he looking at your next friend. That's not okay. So that's who? Mm, it's, you know, you're right. You're right. Let me be positive. It's not okay when you're obviously uncomfortable with it. Mm. Like it wasn't a thing where she was like, yeah, we all get it in. Like I'm happy for him. It was a thing where you can explicitly see that, that it bothered her. Oh. And I'm like, sis, tell that nigga, no, you can't go around fucking all my friends and then go to your friends and be like, I'm not comfortable with you sucking his dick. Like where's the sisterhood at? Like, you cannot go to your friend and be like, can you not suck his dick, please? <laughs> like, is that, the, like, you can't go to your friends and say that? Is that inappropriate? No, if that's the way you feel, you absolutely should be able to go yes, to your friend and be it's, like, hey. because it's, it's different if y'all in agreement, mm-hmm. right? If y'all in agreement, everyone's in integrity with their word, everyone knows what's going on. But it's like everyone's agreeing because they think they should agree. Mm-hmm. But you can explicitly see they're uncomfortable with ways folks are moving in these groups. And I was like, why don't somebody just say something? Like, I don't want to share penises. With y'all, at least. Mm-hmm. Or if we're going to share penises, we might can't be friends. Because I, I don't want him coming over to Taco Tuesday. I have a prediction about that, just in what? general. I have a prediction that, like, 
I don't know, years down the line, like marriage is not going to be a thing and it's going to go back to the old days where people be in tribes and all the tribes had sex with each other. Nigga, that's a lie. You've been listening to too much Nick Cannon. It's no, not, I'm for not, real. It's like, not going to happen. That's what I have a prediction of. Tribes. Like, and, yeah. what, nigga, what? You you borderline on some real xenophobia <laughs> shit. Go ahead. What? Go ahead and put not. your whole foot in it. <laughs> it. You know, it's people who live like that now. I know. So I'm saying, I'm saying this is going to be more common. So you think America's going to put our American shit on it and make yes. it really bad. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Speaking of things heavy, the house is becoming a home. Um, we are almost there, y'all. Like, honestly, I think this week we can leave the house. But as you will see a little bit later in our um, check-in, Hurricane Henry. Henry. Andre. Andre, he done came through so it looks like it's just gonna be raining the whole time um but what i've discovered is i love a dramatic curtain and i love a heavy glass listen again my age is showing if things don't got weight to them i don't like them i got my silverware and i didn't like it because i felt too it felt too light mm, you felt too thin i was like i need some base to it i love a glass that you pick up and got some weight to it i love a heavy curtain i love a blackout curtain you like something that you can co-cock somebody with. You can, it can be I like a glass. If I throw it at you, you better fucking duck. Because if you don't, you're going to the hospital. You what you mean you co-cocking it? <laughs> That's what you want. Do you? Can you tell the difference in the heaviness of glass? Yes. Oh, yes. That glass feels like a bottle, of, a bottom of a Hennessy bottle. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> <Bow. laughs> Sit down. <laughs> or it's so heavy you throw it against the wall, don't break. Mm-hmm. It just roll down. Yes. <laughs> Um, next, y'all keep me honest. I really want to venture out, but Hurricane Andre might keep me from doing it. Honestly, the majority of everything I've got has been delivered. All the things that are remaining are like small things. So even if somebody come to block, come and take it, they can take it. It's usually like five dollars. I think some things we want to order. Honestly, I don't know if I was t- telling you near. I think I'm gonna order some bed risers. Mm-hmm. We have a platform bed, and I think just being that low to the ground is not going to do it for me. It's not even that I can't get up, right? I know some people don't like platform beds because like it's hard to get up. It's not hard for me to get up. I just don't like touching the ground. <laughs> It's something about like, uh-huh. and that's a personal thing. Like, it is nothing wrong with that bed. It is nothing wrong with that platform. But I was like, this is way too low to the ground. I need to at least be another foot off the ground. <laughs> I said, what if somebody trying to come up in there on me? Well, they got you. You're already on the ground. Listen, what do you think about that? Would you be against bed rights or it don't bother you? Um, you got used to it. I haven't got used to it. You know, I'm not really. It, it's a bed, so I, you know, I do what I got to do. I think just like a foot riser would be help, helpful. Mm-hmm. I don't even need a lot. Like y'all know, well, maybe you don't if you ain't listening. I love a bed where you got to get a run and jump into. And this ain't it. This is this the is opposite. Like a, this is like a pallet bed. Don't do that. <laughs> it's very New York because it matches our background. Like we we live in Brooklyn. We got like the whole brownstone feel and. The, the exposed brick and so you know here you don't get the big ass slave head canopy beds like that ain't what this for you get the 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 um pallet bed you know it's not called mm-hmm. pallet bed i don't know mm-hmm. platform bed and it just goes with the energy it's a little bit more modern but i was like oh i'm gonna have to get up off this ground mm-hmm. so i'm gonna look for some black bed risers okay. and go from there i think the um the curtains in there is bringing it together though what you think there? yeah i think the curtains are bringing it together our living room is just about done i agree um, lastly, birthday reflections. Um, my thoughts this year, um, child, what happened in this year? This year was almost more of a blur than last year. Mm-hmm. I feel like last year, at least I was a little more present. This one, I was just in la la land. You hear me? Um, but what I really want to do is focus on intentionality, being present and focus on really being honest. Um, this idea of honesty keeps coming back to me. Um, it's this identity. What, what made me think of it is actually, I don't know if y'all know, it's Kesey Layman. Layman is the author of Heavy. Um, I, I actually started listening to Heavy. It's always been on my list, but I ain't had to, like the emotional bandwidth to read it. And it is heavy. Um, heavy is heavy. And I recommend everyone read it, women, but especially black men. Like black men, y'all need to read Heavy. Like read or listen to Heavy. Like I got it on our Audible. And as soon as I'm done listening to it, I'm going to make Niram read it. Like I think it's so good. Um, for folks who don't know, Kesey Lehman, um, he's an American writer, editor, and a professor of English and creative writing. Um, he's, um, I think he's at the University of Mississippi. I forgot which one's from. Um, he's the author of three full-length books, a novel called Long Division, and two memoir, memoirs, How to, kill your, how to Slowly Kill Yourself um, in Other Americas, and Heavy, 
um, which came out in 2008. Um, his work focuses on uh, American racism, feminism, family, family, masculinity, geography, hip hop, Southern black life. Um, he has a blog called Cold Drink. It features essays and short fiction, as well as pieces written by guest contributors. But what Heavy focuses on is a memoir of this young black boy. And he basically talks about his self growing up. But he does it in such a raw form that I only can listen to so much at a time. Mm. I'm just like, ooh, I got to stop there. He talks about everything from um, his relationship with his mother. Um, and he talks about it in a way which even in interviews, he still comes out to be like, yeah, some stuff my mom is still kind of forgiving me on or she hasn't moved on mm -hmm. or like it was parts. The mother was like, do not put that in the book like that is not people business to show. Right. Yeah, he put and, that shit in there. and he put it in there. He was like, it's not to say that you're a bad mother at all. Right. This is just my lived experience. And I want to um, be honest <laughs> and share. Right. My lived experience. He talks about. Um, his relationship with his mother he talks about his relationship with weight he talks about his relationship with obesity he talks about his relationship with food he talks about then the greater blacks community relationship with food um and obesity um and, and those things he talks about um sexuality um not necessarily in sexual orientation but this idea of masculinity and what does it mean to be like a black man in america and more particularly a Southern black man. Mm -hmm. And he just does a really good job. He talks about racism and then white people. Like it, he does. He's a beautiful writer. And he's so like his writing, especially being uh, academic, right? Being a black academic, y'all know black academic, blacks who are in academic. Sometimes we, and I say we, cause I used to be an academic. We lose our voice when we're writing for other people. But when I tell you, it feel like I was reading this brother journal or listen to his journal. Mm -hmm do it so it's called heavy by kise layman go ahead and do that but anywho as i'm reading books and if i get really into it i like to do see in-depth interviews with the author to really unpack what folks are talking about and he really was like talking about this idea of honesty versus truthfulness and he's like i'm striving to be honest not necessarily truthful right because truth is in that moment and everyone has their own version of their truth does that mean it's wrong no nah. but it depends how you feeling, where you at, what that moment is, based on honesty, right? You just staying in that moment, how you feel like that. Like at this moment, in this time, this is what I know to be true. Mm. Compared to truthfulness, if you tell a story of when it immediately happened, right? And then you wait 10 days until that story, and then a year, those all might be different things. Yeah. But it's still your truth, but it has evolved. Compared to if you focus on being honest, relentlessly honest in that moment, it's different. So, again, I'm still unpacking. Because at first I was like, oh, shit, is he on some fuck nigga shit? <sighs> but he's not. He on to something, right? Like, he's really on. I might not process it exactly how he's doing it, but it's something there for me. Like, this idea of truthfulness versus being honest. And which one do you want to um, stand in the most? I listened, but then if you go to Sister Bill Hood's, Never mind. If y'all haven't read All About Love by Bell Hoods, go ahead and do that. Because she got some, um, what's it called when you respond to it? Liners? No, rebuttals? No, no. Rebuttals for that nigga. Yeah, yeah. Because Bell Hoods be like, niggas don't even know what it is to be truthful. Because <laughs> they've been lying their whole life. Shout out to Sister Bell. Then then meanwhile on a ranch, 10 minutes later, Bell Hoods go get in her Corvette with her nigga or woman and dry down. Bell Hoods does a perfect job of calling shit out like capitalism, racism, all that shit. And then she go live it. <laughs> <laughs> but she call it out and call make it. So, she is the perfect example of honesty. She call it out so plain and how bad it is. And then she's like, now I'm about to go head down the street with my nigga in my Corvette. <laughs> Peace. And also my signing fee is 10,000. Oh Thank you. I need to get up there. Um, shout out to Bill, Bill Hooks, All About Love. Actually, after Heavy, I think I might reread re All About Love. Um, it's a wonderful book. Actually, I never listened to it. I wonder if she got it on Audible. See what Sister Bell. I don't know if she's reading it or not. Um, but that's a good one. Yeah, did you good. did you read or listen to All About Love? Mm -mm. Oh, you should do both. You should do heavy and heavy near them. I know you like going on your search for like black male therapists, but like listen, that shit gotta come up. Black man, go read heavy. I think I might send it to all the black men in my life. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Yep. What's going on with you? So, you know, marathon training is still going. Your boy is still on going strong for Boston Marathon. Um, this weekend, we... 
Mabel always starts as soon as I start talking. Uh, this weekend, we had to do a 16-miler. And I say we because I ran with about a group of 200 people uh, with one of the local running groups in, in New York. So, you know, even though I moved here, life is still not where I wanted to be. Niggas still got to go train. Niggas still got to go run. So, this weekend, went running. We ran to this beach. It was cool. It was hot as fuck as well. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that has definitely showed out to me as far as like New York is like New York is giving me give me a lot of like bathroom anxiety. Oh, tell me more. So like as a runner and all the places that I've been, I usually run where like bathrooms are like readily available because like we run it like, you know, the 16 miler took me about three hours. So yeah. I'm out there for like three hours. You got to use the bathroom. Whether it's pee or you got to do number two or whatever. Like, you just got to go to the bathroom. Yeah. And the thing about New York is that, like, shit is just not readily available. And, I mean, and it's COVID. So people it's COVID. It's not readily available. And when it is readily available, it's like, it's almost like a secret. It's almost like a speakeasy. Yeah. So, that gives me a lot of anxiety. So much so, like, when I get ready to leave, I almost feel like I got to wake up, like, two or three hours before. Mm -hmm. Just so I can, like, use the bathroom as many times as possible. So that when I'm out on the road, I don't have to do anything. Jesus. So, like, it's that thing, right? And, like, places where you would think that it would just be readily available. It's so like McDonald's. Nah. Can't go to the McDonald's. Can't go to a Starbucks. Mm -hmm. Like, where do where does one go to pee mm -hmm. while running? So, it's that type of thing, right? You need to get one of them cups. Something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm about to run with a diaper on. Oh, my God. <laughs> but it, it's that thing that just brings me a lot of anxiety. Um when it comes to just running and like training for this marathon, mm -hmm. because it's like, you know, there's only two types of people in this world. Oh, my gosh. Those who haven't and those who have. Shit on themselves. Okay. <laughs> and yeah. I've been on the brink. Like, Lord Jesus, don't let this be the day. Um, Join the club. <laughs> but it is hard. And I think it does provide a lot of anxiety and a lot of strife. And I think it makes the, like, the training, like, unpleasant. Because you're always, or I'm always thinking about that. Because that's one of the things I'm always thinking about. Like, you know, versus like, for example, we was at, you know, staying at your parents' house. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, the actual parents' house. There's stores. There's things of that sort. We was in California. I made my routes based off of like main streets that had grocery stores and things of that sort. I can use the restroom. Uh, New York City is a little bit different because, yeah. you know, everybody be like, no. bathroom clothes. And it's like, even if I buy something? No. Bathroom clothes. It's like... I'm going to buy something. Yeah. Bathroom clothes. It's like, what the fuck? Uh-huh. I'm going to piss. I'm going to piss right here. Oh, my God. Call the police. No, God. Please. So, it's just one of those things where it's like, where does one go? And mm -hmm. how does one do that? And just like regular everyday life. Like, you don't go by YMCA or something? Or YWCA? Well, the thing is, like, I don't know the neighborhoods like that. Oh, okay. That's so, what you need to look up. So, that's the other thing. I don't necessarily know the neighborhoods like that and try to figure that out. But, like. Is that type of thing that provides that just gives a lot of anxiety, yeah. like while running, gotcha. because I don't know the neighborhoods, I don't know what to look for, I don't, you know, say is it a cold word? Mm -hmm. Hey man, I got a shit. Oh my god! Oh, I think there's no more. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so you know that. Uh, other than that, you know, um, one of my good friends invited us over for Naomi's birthday. We had a good dinner. Mm -hmm. That was fun. What did you think about that? Oh, no, it was nice. It was mm -hmm. nice to get out the house. It was nice to, you know, cook food and cooking. That's my love language and mm -hmm. entertaining. So anyone who does that, she literally could have served Lunchables on a platter. And I would have been like, oh, this is nice. Mm -hmm. um, but she's actually a chef. So the food was the beyond food. amazing. I don't, I've never had a bad dish from her. But it was just nice to um, fellowship with people. It was nice to have. Niram doesn't necessarily drink anymore. So it's good to have, like, just a glass of wine or champagne with someone. You know, I don't like, I don't even, I'm getting where I don't necessarily drink no more because it's something about me just sitting here sipping and then Niram drink a glass of water. I'm like, well, shit, pour mine out. <laughs> so it was nice just to be with someone. I still haven't had my Quintus, two things I haven't had. I have my, haven't had my quintessential um, New York brunch yet or my quintessential New York steak dinner yet. So it's like, I'm craving like the interaction. And this event made me feel, if I close my eyes, it's Quintus. It felt very, very close to that. And also, it was just nice to meet like local New Yorkers who, you know, I know we tease y'all. Y'all know we be playing, but like they were just good people. Mm -hmm. Like I know a lot of times New York folks get this, the um, reputation for being rude, staying offish, but like they good people. I think it's just like New England. You start at a hundred and you got to mm -hmm. build yourself up. California was more like Michigan. 
where mm-hmm. you kind of was at a hundred and like, yeah. cool, like we're gonna do this, you know that type. But New York is like, I don't know who the fuck you are, and it was just good meeting like one of our friends' friends mm-hmm. there, like hilarious. I, you know what I think I'm gonna enjoy about New York? The dry humor. Mm. The dry humor be having me rolling, like busting out <laughs> laughing. We're in California, like they don't get it. I don't. They don't get it. Like you can't crack the same jokes as California because they like woke. But, like, they so woke, they got insomnia. Like, it's not fun anymore. Mm-hmm. New York is, like, the right mixture of woke and still can crack a joke on some shit, right? Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's so funny. One of the girls, I don't even know if we should know the story. Um, she's on Facebook. And it's, like, this guy reached out to her. And his picture was, like, his, he, like, DM'd her. It was, like, something about beautiful mom. I don't know. He said, why is, it, is your, you know, because her that? profile says something, like, it's complicated. Yeah. And he's, like, why is it complicated? And the thing is, it was, like, in a K. Yeah. It, yeah, yes. So he responded, Why is it complicated with a K? And she responded, Are you in prison? And she just showed us the comments and it just went from there. It, and the thing is, I couldn't even get past the sentence, Are you in prison? <laughs> because his question was, What? <laughs> Why, Why is, is it complicated, complicated with a K? <laughs> and she said, are you in prison? How do those sentences go? Like, that is humor. Like, how does those two things, they're having two different conversations. And, like, that's literally how the two different conversations went. And he was in prison. Because <laughs> the way we got to this point, when we're somehow talking about jail, she's like, yeah, but them niggas be having phones in jail. And I was like, yeah, like, what? I was like, I don't know if they supposed to have legal phones. And she's like, well, look, this nigga just sent me this. And he'd be responding instantly. And I was like, what? Show me. And then she showed me, is it complicated? And then she said, are you in prison? prison? And she said, yeah. yes. This is her. What you do? I said, girl, girl, delete, block, stop asking. So that was hilarious. Well, you know, just being able to just kick it with some friends, right? And talk um, about their neighborhoods. Because she's mm-hmm. from Harlem. And mm-hmm. I was like, I think I was supposed to be in Harlem, not Brooklyn. And she was like, listen. And she ran down what Harlem was. And I was like, yeah, don't my niggas. <laughs> Shout out to Harlem. <laughs> I ain't trying to be out there in zombie land. Oh, yeah. I got a lot of shit going on in Harlem. So, you know, it's just good just to be able to just keep right. it friends. It's not as uh, zombie-ish out here. No, it? there isn't. You rarely see any zombie. Yes. Homeless. Yes. Or hustlers. Yes. yes. Zombies, no. Yeah, yeah. Some of you are some parts of Harlem. Mm-hmm. It's, but you know, it's the hustle of Harlem I like. Mm-hmm. I feel like Harlem's even have a different accent. Harlem talk to you quick. You know, when a nigga start talking fast, I'm like, talk to me quick because I'm listening slow. Mm-mm. Come on. So we kicked it with her. Um, and then, you know, Henri came. We'll talk about that little Henry. Henry. I don't know what the fuck his name is. <laughs> um, and then what the fuck is up with these racist ass, toxic ass New York uh, COVID commercials? Tell us more. They, I'm not gonna do the accents, but they be having African uncles. They be having Jamaican zaddies. They be having uh, the Den- Den- uh, Dominican aunties, the and, mommies and poppies at the store. And it's like I got the COVID test because, or I got the vaccine because I want to be on Dyke Man. I was like, like what? what? <laughs> yeah, it's like really weird. Stuff. It's just like I want to do. I want to do who red things with my who my friends. And I was like, what the fuck is this? These commercials are just ridiculous. Who so, approved it? Somebody is. And it comes on between him and that um, Indian guy who said he's the doctor of New York. <laughs> I'm the doctor. I was of like, New what? York. Is that a position in every state? <laughs> I've never mean? heard of that. <laughs> I'm the doctor of New, New York. York. I was like, what is I remember who's the doctor of Michigan? Exactly. Jesus. It was, yeah, but they a little toxic. To the point where one of them was going on, I asked, was the man on K on television? Because he was looking like, I don't know if he was reading from a teleprompter or something, but he was like, this ain't it. <laughs> like, I had to hold it back. I said, is, it, is everything okay here? That nigga was reading like me when I be reading these uh, long ass emails y'all be sending. <laughs> he was tampering over words. And this is the final cut. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that nigga and then I'm like, oh, so this nigga supposed to represent the vaccination? And this nigga, that nigga, fifteen dollars in the chopped cheese. Yeah, Ooh. <laughs> that's another reason I want to go to Harlem for chopped cheese. Yeah, I ain't seen no chopped cheese in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. They love a um, what y'all love in Brooklyn? Yeah, love a turkey chicken sandwich with some turkey dry ass turkey bacon. Y'all really don't fuck with the swine out here like that. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. 
But I want me a nice ass chopped cheese. And well, chopped I know cheese? That's one. That's beef. It's like a. No, I changed subjects. Oh. Right. Like, I'm talking about two different things. So, one, I ain't seen a good chopped cheese in Brooklyn. Oh. Two, whenever you're talking about sandwiches in Brooklyn, they always like to do some type of deli sandwich or they do like a chicken cutlet with some type of turkey bacon on it. And gotcha. I'm like, keep the fucking turkey bacon. Gotcha. Because it's rubber. It's no such thing as good turkey bacon. Just don't eat bacon. Just eat a turkey sandwich. Okay. But chopped cheese, folks who are in Brooklyn, where y'all get a chopped cheese from? I know a lot of places in Harlem to get a. Yeah, every corner. <laughs> Not one here. It is a little hipster out here. <laughs> Where the fuck is a chopped cheese at? <laughs> well, I came here. It's like a Coney for Detroit. <laughs> That's exactly like, you know, you go to suburbs, you can get a Coney, but it ain't the same. Mm-hmm. I'm looking for a chopped cheese like I'm looking for a Coney. Oh. Mm-hmm. Found it yet? No, I'm going to have to vent to Harlem. I got a uh, friend who lives on the other side of Harlem, so I might go pseudo visit her and go to brunch. It's a, it's a white girl, so I might go brunch and still be hungry to give me a chopped cheese on the way back. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Cool. Um, so, yeah, like these commercials, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, for the folks in New York, you know what I'm talking about. I think the one who tipped me was like Niram said, I, was he Jamaican? I don't know where he was I don't from. know what the hell But he was. was a um, tall, dark-skinned, slender, older gentleman. His glasses were hanging off his face. And he was like, ah. Uh, I got the shot. Ah. Uh, I got no accent. You hear me? What shot? Uh, I got the shot. So I can be out. Uh, this is my third shot. And then the next take, yeah, this is my second, second shot. shot. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Somebody lying. <laughs> Did you get two or three? Three. Listen, I'm, I'm a Moderna mama, so I'm lining up for that next one soon. They about to, listen, they about to start giving a shot every six weeks. Mm-hmm. Jesus. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, you want to happen just a couple of times? Uh, speaking of COVID, I'm sorry not to keep, never mind, go ahead. No, no. That, look, oh, Hur- Hurricane Henre. Listen. What? <laughs> <laughs> we from the Midwest, honey, and it was showing. <laughs> I was talking to my sister by person. I was like, yeah, that Hurricane Henry coming. She's like, yeah, Hurricane Henre. And I was like. Who the fuck is that? that? <laughs> Cause she, I think she said she's from Belize too. I gotta also get used to black people not being from um civil rights black. Yeah, and I'm just like, oh, is that Han Ray? I don't know what it and is. And then you ain't feel comfortable to be like, no, since it ain't Henry, it's Han Ray. An en- Ray. What is it? Han Ray. How you know. pronounce the storm, y'all? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we don't. We need help. Because if I was in Michigan, they would have just be like Henry. I meant to watch the Detroit news and see if they call it Andre or if they call it Henry. Mm. If I know Detroit news, how I know they call that nigga Henry. <laughs> they say Henry coming through the coast. We don't know how to do it. We it depends on who the weather person is or what country they for how I come out. Mm. We prepped y'all. We got ready, and when we was prepping, nobody else was. It almost irritated me. I was in the lift, and I was like, "Yeah, be safe for the storm." There's like a storm's coming. <laughs> it's like nigga, a hurricane's coming. <laughs> Oh, then I told Niram, I was like, Niram, go get you some candles and, you know, just in case to make sure everything cool. And what Niram said, well, you said you went in and everything was fully stocked. Everything was stocked. And like, don't get me wrong, we're not hoarding. We're not like white people. I was like, we need at least a candle for a bathroom in the living room. And then we need some batteries and a flashlight, right? Like, just simple, basic things. Everything was stocked. All the candles was there. All the flashlights was there. All the batteries are there. You wouldn't even think something was happening. And meanwhile, I'm here. Because I, I didn't came back from my run. I didn't took a nap. I didn't woke up. The first thing she didn't say to me to provide, you know, uh, starting anxiety is the storm is coming and we ain't prepared. We what weren't. Are you, what are you as a man of this house? Hey, nobody said what all that. The fuck? You need Damn. to talk to your therapist about all that. Ju- a nigga just woke up. Like, what hey, do you mean? I said, Nero, could you go out and get a candle? And he doesn't get all of that from me. Nah, you I not said, like that. Nah, can you go out and get a candle? You for be trying to minimize that shit. That's not how it went. That's not how it went. I said, nigga, we need a candle. <laughs> no. Because all I kept flashbacking is the Hurricane Sandy. <laughs> and the nigga just had a bag of chips. That's not how it, it went. It won't get me again. And Niram's sister always say, everywhere y'all go is a natural disaster. I was like. It's a natural disaster everywhere. I think it's global warming. But it is. And we prepared for it, though. Um, Mabel hates it. Yeah. I got all these damn candles. I'm about to light these bitches. We about to have a mood. Niram, candles on this fire. Oh. You can always have a candle. It ain't oh. no wrong with have a candle. Listen, that power go out and never know. Okay. Okay. Well, we're about to set some moods in this bitch. Okay. Neil's acting like we got 20 candles. We got like three. So I don't oh. know what's the mood. Well, we got them blackout curtains. I got six of them. Oh, you got six candles. Plus a 20 pack of tea light candles. What you doing to tea light candles? Hey. I'm going to burn for hours. <laughs> you never know when you need them. Jesus. 
Um, but it's funny to even see all the New Yorkers because what made me nervous, honestly, is when we were at our friend's house and they sent us an emergency text mm-hmm. to be like, listen, flash floods, it's going to be dangerous as fuck. Go outside if you want, you probably will die. You got 30 hours. I was like, what? I said, this thing is dangerous. I was like, let me get my house in order and draw my shades in. Um, but we made it. But it's been funny with all the New Yorkers. They be like, y'all made me cancel my Sunday plans for some rain. <sighs> we was about to go to it brunch. Was, it was heavy rain, though. We was about to go to Peter Luger's for brunch. For lunch. Lunch. Yeah. It was heavy rain, though. But it wasn't. It, it was. Let me. I don't even want to say it out loud, honey. Because, listen, Mother Nature would turn around on her ass. And Mother Nature's already pretty upset with us. We Good. We stayed in the house. We were prepared. We were unharmed. Mm-hmm. We did not have any power. We, we did not lose power. We didn't have any funding. So we are grateful. Yes. Mm-hmm. Next, did y'all hear about Reverend Jesse Jackson and his wife hospital hospitalized with that COVID? Mm. Jesus be offense. Oh my God. Y'all mask up, social distance, take the vaccination. Because I think Jesse Jackson was vaccinated. Was he? I think. I, I want to say he was one of the first ones. Oh. But listen, he older, he got underlying conditions. Jesse be up and out in these streets. Mm-hmm. He marching and shit. That goes back to even being vaccinated. You got to wear these masks. You know, you still got to wear these masks and be protected. That was just my friendly reminder that we still in the middle of a pandemic, y'all. Mm-hmm. Honestly, shit about to shut down. Yeah. So you might as well get your last little who rise out. That's what I said. We was trying to go to a little steakhouse that had some outdoor seating. I'm going to try to hit one or two more outdoor seatings before I go ahead and lock it down, too, because it's a wrap. Okay. Um, basically, the earth is over our bullshit, though. Yeah. I was talking to Nia about this. Like, the earth is literally trying to do anything it can to purge itself of humans. Yeah, it's going to kill us all. Like, it's like, make it rain, flood them out, start fires, start. Like, it's so funny. Nia broke it down. It was like, when you get sick, what happened? You get a fever. When earth gets sick, what they do? Start a fire. When the fire don't work, then what you got to do? Purge. You start throwing up. You start pooping. What the earth do? Rain, rain, storm, get it out. Then what happened? You go get some medicine because you need to produce some antibodies. This COVID ain't a, um, ain't a virus, it's an antibody. Like, it's trying to get our asses up out of here. The mm. earth is pissed. Pissed, pissed, pissed. Y'all keep fucking with it. And then here you come, you niggas. Next story. Why y'all on them crates? Yo. <laughs> Where y'all get all those crates from? And I see the conspiracy. Look, Dr. Umar and them talking about the FBI. See, I done dropped them crates in the black neighborhood to kill us. <laughs> because the COVID not doing it fast enough. <laughs> so crates don't do it. Yeah. He said them strapped us to get them crates. <laughs> so five niggas falling off crates. Yes. Because it was only going to take about two or three. And then they're like, oh, yeah, we done. <laughs> what you mean? All I'm going to take is two, for me to watch two, three niggas fall off of crates and be like, oh, I'm not doing it. Why would anyone think it's, it's important to walk on a crate? Like well, who's like, yeah, I seen Boosie giving five thousand dollars away. No. So if I was it is there in nothing Baton Rouge, stabilizing that crate to the ground. And that crate's at least what, twenty feet high? If I was in Baton Rouge, no. not having a job, and I heard Boosie giving away five thousand dollars for somebody to walk across those crates. No. I'm giving it a shot. I'm walking across those crates. But where are they getting them? I don't know where Boosie got his from, but like these crates are everywhere. They're in New York, they're in Detroit. All the black neighborhoods. Now I'm Dr. Umar. <laughs> They are in all the neighborhoods. They in everywhere. All right. You want to do one last story before we get on out of here now? Yeah, what we got? Um, one thing that I found on psychology um, today is this idea of having different worldviews with your partner. So a new study calls into question a longstanding tenet of relationship science that romantic couples exhibit convergence in their attitudes, traits, beliefs, and behaviors over time. A fundamental principle of relationship development is that romantic partners become psychologically interdependent. Their experiences and views converge over time. Um, since the authors of the research study, um, their results challenged um, interpreting these theories by specifying that couples become more similar across times. People's traits, well-being and beliefs follow trajectories that were disconnected from their partners. Um, to allow uh, to arrive at this con- conclusion, the authors examined data from 171 mixed gender couples who took part in the New Zealand Attitude and Value Survey over a four year time period. They tracked how couples responded to questions regarding their psychological and physical health, relationship, well-being, personality traits, political beliefs, environmental attitudes, religiosity. Uh, Is that really a word? Yeah, I guess so. Gender, sexual attitudes, and group and country-based ideologies. In the weathers, couples showed signs of convergence in their attitudes, experience, um, and views over time. They They found limited evidence. This is the T. They found limited evidence that couples experience... 
uh, experiences and worldviews converge over time. For instance, um, there were some instances of short-term attitude convergence, such as synchronizing of political opinions during an election year, but these effects were generally short-lived. More often than not, couples' attitudes evolved independently from one another. In fact, there were some instances in belief divergence um, such as one partners become increasingly dissatisfied with their life and economy, uh, economy to the extent that their partner was on average becoming more satisfied. The author states, altogether, we cannot conclude that partners in long term relationships work to maintain one unified perspective about themselves and the world. While couples did not exhibit the level of belief convergence the researchers expected to find, they weren't entirely dissimilar in their attitudes and worldviews either. For example, um, the researchers found a high degree of similarity between couples in the area of relationship needs, beliefs and religions, beliefs about the environment and beliefs regard to societal groups. Interestingly, though, couples were least similar in the areas of personality traits and individual health. Um, so what does this all mean? It says couples are generally more similar um, to each other than they are different. But that doesn't mean their attitudes or world views evolve in unison. Mm. What you think about that now? Yeah, I agree. Just look at both of us. Oh, my goodness. Like our world Tell views, more. Tell I mean, more. Our world views are, they are similar and they're different at the same time. So some things that you are like, we're, we're just on opposite sides of the spectrum. Oh, but like what? Um, oh, lying. Uh-huh. I'm not lying. Oh, go ahead. If we, uh, I would say, I would take religion for one. Okay, I won't say we're on the opposite side of the spectrum, but go we're ahead. not on the same side of the spectrum. Okay, well, tell me more. Because you know, I'm more of an agnostic individual, and uh-huh. you believe in the Holy Trinity. Oh my so, god! Like, not the Father, Son, and the Holy. I'm just saying. Uh-huh. So, like that right there. Yeah. That's two different spectrums. I think the spectrum on that is me believing in you, not you, somewhere in the middle. Says who? Nigga me. <laughs> exactly. The spectrum. The middle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What honestly, what really got found interesting about this is that the ones that's most um different or that does not grow in unison is the personality traits mm-hmm. and individual health. Yeah, I can see that. Tell me more. Like I would I really want to know like the individual health something is something that's interesting. Cause I, I think about like you and running and I'm a clean walker or Uber or lifter, like how does that play into it? No, I, I think that's just one of the things that just makes us different, right? Is that the fact that I'm able to, I, I like physical activity. I like sport and things of that sort. And like that have became, that has always became a, a source of an outlet for me. But for you, you like, fuck that shit. I don't like it. I don't like sweating. I don't know why I'm breathing hard. I only run when uh, somebody's chasing me. Oh. And it's like, well, you have to run more than that, baby. Because like if the, the revolutionary come if the revolution come, you yeah. stuck. But I'm wondering why that is a negotiable. I don't know. Um, that's what I. That's what makes it interesting. Why is it negotiable? Trades. Because I think you're still able to find community outside of your partner mm. in that life. Mm. So like you're still, I'm still able to go find a community of fitness enthusiasts that I'm still able to have, you know, relationships with, um, and to like form this friendship with. Mm. And you can go do the same thing with. You know, the sister, the sister list of sisters. The sisterhood, no sister. Yeah. But I think even more than personality traits, because personality traits is something different. But mm-hmm. individual health, that, it got me thinking, like, why isn't that a deal breaker? Like, mm-hmm. why would someone want to be in a relationship with someone where they don't have the same viewpoints on individual health? Because short term, it doesn't affect you, but long term, it will. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And why is that? I mean, again, you know, if I'm pontificating. It, it reminds me of the individualistic society we have in the Western culture oh, well, of how like you do you, I do me. Good luck. Mm-hmm. But if you're really supposed to be in a relationship, a union is great space. Confident. Con- uh, like you, it should be like, no, nah, but I need you to do everything you can to like be healthy and make this relationship last as long as it can too. like, that's the part that, Maybe pause. Personality. Okay. Yeah, I get it. Different strokes with different folks. I think every pot got a lid. Right. So that's more personality. But the health one, that's something I'm really unpacking. Like, huh. I, and I understand that, but I think that goes into other people's beliefs. Like that goes mm-hmm. into people's beliefs about their worldviews and everything else. Mm-hmm. Right. Because like if you're was if you was brought around family that was like, Well, why why would I go run when I can go run and get hit by a bus? I'm just gonna eat this ham hot. My God. 
So it's like it's it's whatever beliefs you have. We got to be heavy. We gonna have to have a book club on it. That, you talk that. about this. Uh-huh. But I, I think it's whatever beliefs you have around physical activity, and I think um, in health in general, and I think those are just some of the things that people are willing to compromise. Uh, like compromise on. Mm. Should it be a compromise? I don't know if it should or shouldn't, but I think that um, it's just one of the things that's like, oh, we have a different belief and it's something that you're willing to compromise on. So, for example, even when we take health out of it, if you like, I need someone that's going to believe in the Holy Trinity, too, and me being like, no, I'm an agnostic. And but if you want if you're willing to die on those laurels, Mm -hmm. we probably wouldn't be together. Yeah, because it's like, oh, you need to do this. Wait a minute. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to stop you right there. What I'm saying, don't, no, don't but I'm be. just saying though, because yeah, I like, what you're saying. but that's the same thing with health and other yeah. things. It's just some things people are willing to compromise on mm-hmm. to make it work. Okay. Lastly, I think it's something that goes to core values versus attitudes, right? Like, so and I think you were beginning to unpack that too. Like you have to get very, very clear on what your core values are and like, what are the one? what are you willing to compromise on? What are you relentless for? Um, what are you willing to see different sides for? What are you willing for your partner to kind of do different things and show up? But I think, you know, what would be interesting to see if they took this survey to a different level and unpacked it maybe with people with kids mm. to see if people were as um, comfortable with this. Because then I argue, as you have kids, if y'all have these different viewpoints, how do you how do you then place that into raising your kids like mm-hmm. in an equitable environment? Yeah. Also in this survey, I'm curious if they did intercultural any like cultural, intercultural being in consideration? Because this was in New Zealand. Last time I checked, I don't think New Zealand's that diverse. But I wonder what happened if they did it like in Detroit or Chicago or like mm. with couples to see if it will be the same things or if it will be different too. Gotcha. Hmm. Yeah. I just thought it was something interesting that I seen in the psychology today to begin unpacking. What do y'all think? You think, um, is it strange that couples don't have all the same viewpoints? Are y'all also having a little moment that saying the two areas that there's least convergence on is individual personality traits and me, which most surprisingly is individual health. What's your thoughts on it? Yeah. All right. As always to submit your black love story, go to black love to submit a question for kitchen table. Talk shoot us an email at black love matters at gmail.com uh, to leave a comment about anything we talked about. Head on over to that website. We got that SoundCloud and we got that voicemail at 508-784-1111. Once again, that's 508-784-1111. Talk to y'all later. And remember, love, love is ever evolving. Peace.